What would you do in the following situations? Number one, you wake up one morning with the flu. Raise your hand if you would stay home and rest. All right, ma'am, why would you stay home and rest when you have the flu? You don't want to get everybody else sick. Who would go to work but avoid socializing with people? And why would you do that, sir? Kind of in demand at work. In demand at work. And who would go to work but socialize only with the people you do not like? <laughs> what have we learned? Different people have different reactions to the same situation. But what if I were to ask, not what would you do, but what should you do? Is there a framework we can use to determine the right thing to do no matter how other people happen to react? The answer is yes. And since the question, what should you do, is an ethical one, the solution lies in five basic principles of ethics. <laughs> Criticism at its best is about bringing out the best in other people. It's not about venting. It's not about displaying your power over the other person. When someone you care about, someone who works for you, works with you, has a relationship with you, has done something he or she should not have done, or hasn't done something they should have done. And so it's only natural to be upset, to be disappointed, to be angry. But the ethically intelligent solution is to harness that anger and, and channel it in a way uh, that is focused on helping the other person be the best they can be. What does it mean to give an ethically intelligent apology? It first means being sincere about it by saying, I'm sorry, taking ownership for it, being accountable, but it doesn't end there. You know, sorry seems to be the hardest word, but sometimes it's the easiest word because it's just a word, right? It doesn't mean anything unless it's backed up with action, with an action plan, with a strategy for avoiding committing the same error again. Raise your hand if you feel unappreciated. Please come up. Mario and Christy are feeling unappreciated, but we're going to change that by giving them the loudest standing ovation of all time. Come on. Take a look at Mario and Christy as they go back to their seats. Do you notice a difference? What's the difference? They're smiling. They're smiling. They don't look miserable any longer. You made their day. And, and in fact, I'll bet for several years, they're going to be talking about the standing ovation they got at the Imagine Theater in Novi, Michigan, simply for being themselves. Now, I want you to look around the room. Do you notice a difference around the room? Because I sure do. But when I called you to action, you focused all your energy on making Mario and Christy feel better. And when you saw that it paid off, it made you feel better. This is the only take home message you need. Why should we be ethically intelligent? Why should we lead a life of compassion, of kindness, of being fair? It's the right thing to do. But it also turns out it makes you feel better. It benefits you. Everybody wins when we apply these principles as difficult as it is to do that. It was fabulous. What I really enjoyed was that he gave so much useful information that I could implement immediately in my life, in both personally and in business. I thought it was very good, very focused, very dynamic this evening. I thought it was very inspirational. And he actually made us take action because the whole thing was to take action. And he was getting the audience involved too. It's something everybody needs to be aware of and utilize in their daily lives. It's really important.